Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, another day of class. Hope all of you all are doing well. Good morning and good to see all our early birds. Uh, thank you for being diligent and joining in on time as we wait for the others. Good morning to all the e-learning students. Also welcome to all the e-learning students. Hope you're enjoying the course and really being built up um, emotionally as we've been passing through the last couple of weeks. Uh, today we're on week nine of our, uh, of our lessons and our lectures. And um, we're going to be looking at something new today, a new chapter. Um, but before we get there, as usual, a quick recollection of what we have been, what we did, what we covered yesterday, uh, last week. Um, so would, would anybody like to put us on speed of what we are learning? And that'll be, that'll be great uh, for those of us who were not able to attend uh, last week. Uh, someone who can, a couple of you, maybe not just one, uh, just bring us on speed of what we were, what we have been learning. So we're on the class of inner wholeness, just so that we remember. Yes. Uh, who would like to go? Who would like to begin? Yeah, anybody, Prabhaka, would you like to help us on what Prabhaka or I'm, I'm just trying to remember the people who were there last week, Shri Kumar. Avni is usually our opening bats person. She always takes on the role. So I thought I'd, we'd give her a break today and ask somebody else to take over. Yeah, anyone? <coughs> Spending time in God's love. Okay. It can Thank take you. out all fears, anxiety, uh -huh. okay. and whatever worries and all that we have. Mm -hmm. Whatever mm -hmm. happens, we should remember that God's love is there for us. Mm -hmm. We will okay. get all security in that. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sissy, for that. Yes. Uh, so she's brought about one of the points that is uh, enjoying the love of God or receiving the Father's love. Okay. Um, yes, Shay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. Um, being established in the identity of Christ and not mm -hmm. any other thing, not letting any other thing define our identity except Christ Jesus. Being the Amen. letting it be the bedrock of who we are, and because of Him in us, in uh, we in Him, that's what that's why we are basically. That's yes, that's it. Thank you, thank you, Shay. Yes, the say the the other truth that we learned about is um, knowing who we are in Christ or being established in our identity in, in Christ and not just establishing it, but also living in freedom out of that uh, identity. Good, that's good. And what is, there's one more truth that we learned the last time. Anyone? I think Mangi, you had uh, unmuted yourself. Would you like to share? Avni has already given you a cue. <laughs> yes, first. Uh, releasing the past, so shouldn't live in, uh, in the past, shouldn't mm -hmm. release it in God's hand and then move on with our lives. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So the last time, yes, Avinash, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm just adding, ma'am, uh, some points, like, as you said last time, and it was really, um, it was really amazing for me, like, uh, about Father's love, like, as you said, the most crucial thing we need as a human being is love. Ultimately, we need love from someone. But 
uh, here is the thing as a human being and human love is limited measured possibility and not sufficient and it's going to end up someday but the father love but the father's love is limitless immeasurable and it shows no possibility so it was really amazing for me and it really speak to me so thank you so much yeah wonderful thank you thank you abinash yeah i think i just want to add to what uh, abinash was saying and a verse that has been lingering in this last one week for me is uh, from uh, zephaniah 3:17 a very familiar verse that uh, you know i uh, Uh, that that maybe a lot of us know by heart also and there is this uh, the part of it the the latter part of the verse that says uh, he will quiet you with his love you know and that was uh, that kind of struck me uh, in uh, in the sense of um, when the heart or when you know when you're going through things that uh, are in your circumstances especially when uh, you're going through many many things that could deter your heart or that uh, destabilizes you or kind of shakes you up or you know brings you to a place of confusion or um, questions or doubts that come up maybe with things that you're seeing you know especially um, i think over the last uh, couple of weeks um you know you sometimes question certain choices that you made you've made and uh, the mind once you know something like that you know just a doubt comes in and the mind can get so cluttered and confused and uh, filled with so much of questions and confusion and regrets and all of that and uh, this is the worst that you know really calmed me down i said okay he quiets me with his love so he's actually you know like um, like mother sing uh, uh, lullabies to children uh, what do they do in in a when there's so much of confusion and pain and you know the child is at so much of unrest just uh, uh, the calm hold of a mother or a, you know a rocking <clears throat> of the mother or the uh you know just a song of the mother or just the cuddling of the mother brings about that sense of calm and uh, i think a lot of us would have would have even uh, experienced that with our own children for those of us who are parents just picking them up and uh, uh showing them an expression of love quiets them and and uh, i was so reminded of that same picture of the way that the lord quiets you with his love with all the confusion that it's going he quiets you with his love right so um yeah i think i just wanted to add that because it's it's been very real to me for the last one week and since uh, abinash had pointed that out i thought i'll just bring that uh, as well so thank you thank you abinash yeah so we've uh, we what what we have been looking at is uh journeying into emotional wholeness that's what we looked into so prior to that you know we we recognized we prayed we um received our healing and deliverance through those 10 14 points that we went into we prayed and you know just uh began to receive whatever god has for us now even after we've done that we need we 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 recognize that we just can't leave it there we can't just stop it there but we need to move into that wholeness you know we have to continue it, it you need to uh journey through that uh and and that is is basically done through these truths that we learned the last time and these truths that we consistently meditate on and keep uh, focusing on and yes the first one is the father's love just knowing that the father's love is beyond anything we we have experienced his love is limited immeasurable it's unconditional it's unchanging uh, there are no dimensions to his love so much so that you know he he gave us his son and he loved us so much that he gave us his son 
so I was in in a devotion that I'm doing right now. Uh, you know, it, this this uh, something very similar came about of how, you know, how did God the Father view uh, Jesus, His Son, when He was being sacrificed, and uh, did it pain and uh, you know grieve the Lord's heart? Yes, it did, but it was. Uh, so he looked at it as a sweet fragrance, and I, I think it's in Ephesians that talks about it. You know, the fragrance, um, uh, the, the 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 way that it is seen is through like a sweet fragrance. That the way that G, that that God the Father saw that, although it grieved his heart, was a sweet fragrance because he he did it for us, and it's out of that love that uh, uh, you know he did he sent his son for us so it was it was uh, the the sacrifice of jesus um uh, is like a fragrant offering to to the lord to god the father and that's the love that he carries us with the second point that we looked into was um living out of establishing our identity in christ uh, and living out of that identity so we we learned of who we are in Christ is what our true identity is and who we are in Christ is who we really are. And the when, when we trust Christ, when we believe him, our identity changes and we become a new creation. And the desire of God for us is that we live out of that uh, identity that we have in Christ because it transforms everything. It transforms the way we relate to God. It transforms the way that we relate to, we look at ourselves and the way we relate to others. So uh, we were also looking at um, certain declarations that we need to keep building ourselves on, standing on some of those declarations um, in order to journey through that, into that wholeness. And the last point that we looked was how we can release the past, not live in the rear view mirror life, you know, keep looking at what happened in the past, but to keep looking forward. Although we learn from what has happened in the past, but we keep moving forward. And we saw two very good examples of people. One was Joseph and one was Jacob of how they continued to uh, uh, you know, move move ahead, how God had called them to keep moving ahead. Okay, so today we are going to be moving on, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, we're going to be addressing some, again, some disciplines on how we stay emotionally whole. So we've come to a place of receiving it, being delivered from everything that has kept us emotionally broken, We've looked into how we can journey into um, emotional wholeness. And now it is, how do we stay emotionally whole? How, how do we continue to maintain ourselves? How do we continue keeping our cars oiled? You know, for those of you who may, who may have a vehicle, uh, you know that you have to continue to maintain it. Although, you know, you've repaired it once or you've bought it brand new, uh, there are going to be points of time that you have to, you, you will have to take it to the workshop or to the service center every now and then to keep maintaining it. Okay, so there is a process that needs to be involved in maintaining or maybe even it's your house that uh, uh, that you've built and it's it's not going to stay the way that it is because there are kids running around you know, you'll have walls that are soiled, you'll have spills that are there, you'll have dirt that is accumulated. So you need to maintain it. You need to keep doing something to keep it fresh and to keep it whole or presentable or in a working condition. And so also for us. So as we walk through different stages uh, of life, we are going to face challenges. Okay. And um, every uh, phase of life has a has a different challenge. Uh, so when you look at uh, when you look at uh, um, let that start from you know right from the beginning of uh, uh, you know whether, whether you've realized it or not you know when we when we look at a at a life cycle of an individual you start off as a as an infant or as a toddler then you get into childhood then you get into adolescence and you get into young adulthood and then you get into um uh, middle age and then you get to old age you know generally this this is 
the a life cycle of of an individual so you start off with with very basic challenges and difficulties of you know learning how to walk and learning how to eat and getting things straightened and learning how to um you know uh do things right later it moves on to challenges of uh, you know certain pressures of school and expectations from home so all of that becomes your next challenge as you grow into adolescence there are bodily changes that happen changes that happen in relationships that you know you have different ideas that you're thinking about and uh, you know living through those ideas you have relationships that parental relationships you've got to work through then you move on to young adulthood where you make decisions about career about spouse about um, about ministry about services um, about education about career who, get, who to get married to once you get married you have challenges on on working together um, in uh, in unity with with a spouse um, where to live uh, you know how do you take care of in-laws and having children and then and then it is you know dealing with children uh, dealing with older parents and as you keep going it's um, making a living uh, ensuring that the kids are educated ensuring that you know you, you're you're going you, you have a purpose and and you're living out of that purpose and then moving on into taking care of the elderly and when you get to having age uh, being older there are health challenges there are financial challenges there are mental health challenges uh, there are uh, you know that you, you continue to need growing spiritually so when you look at life you know there are so many things that that we will face and um, sometimes I, I keep telling my kids i think the best years of my life was when i was four years old there was nothing to take care of everything was taken care of uh, for you but then when you're four years old you're waiting to be 10 and then when you're 10 you're waiting to be 18 and when you're 18 you you know so it keeps going on but the truth is that we will all face challenges and these challenges not just as part of our lifestyle changes challenges can come on because of events that happen to us there could be certain things that are unexpected or there can be there can be events that can be traumatic so for example the last two years have been such a sea change for everybody all of us have gone through different kinds of challenges we've had to cope through things that we probably never ever expected um, even things that have been comfortable for us have have proven to be uh, to be places of conflicts so all of that uh, th there there are going to be many things that may come or we may even be in places that we may ourselves make certain mistakes or certain errors in our lives you know we make make wrong choices but through all of this uh, you know our emotions are are part of of this journey so the question is how is it how do we stay uh, emotionally uh, whole how how can we continue to stay emotionally whole it's 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 like this you know you you squeaky clean some uh, let's say your shirt and but you need to wear it the next time and then there is probably going to be some curry that drips down and and you got to get it squeaky clean again right so you need to keep maintaining and staying emotionally whole and we're going to be covering uh, specifically two areas or two ways or two disciplines that we will need to follow uh, in this lecture and and the next and we will take the next two the next time so we're going to we're going to be going a little slow and and I'm going to do it a little more practically because um a lot of times i you know we we may be hearing a lot of this and and, and most of this may not be new to us but it, for us to apply it um may uh, you know takes us a little bit of time to think and to understand and to say oh okay this is where i am this is uh, this these are the things that i am actually right now dealing with and this is what needs to be changed okay so we're going to be doing a little bit of practical um uh, or practical sharing again and uh, um because i think that's really needed for us to come to a place of awareness and uh, live out of these spiritual truths okay so the first two truths that we're going to look in is renouncing uh, the lies that we that we have with God's word, and the second one is how we can speak blessing and we cancel curses. Okay, so this is how two two truths or two disciplines that we need to um, walk in. 
to stay emotionally whole. So let's take the first one, renouncing lies with God's word, with the truth of God's word. Now, as you pass through every day, your mind is being thrown with lies, either things that you tell yourself or things that somebody tells you or things that you hear from the world or, you know, constant stimuli that you get. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I was actually talking to a, to a group of teens and uh, um, um, so they were, they were talking about the challenges that they face when just being in a group of friends, the kind of information or the kind of pressures that come by just being in the presence of a group of friends. So it could be probably even the clothes somebody wears, okay? That becomes like almost a trigger point to question and say, okay, I don't... I don't look as good as them or, or I don't have um, clothes as good as them. Or they were talking about just looking through certain Instagram posts or cer certain social media posts and the kind of messages that are subtly thrown out to them becomes like so, so lifelike, like, um, you know, even even certain posts of maybe somebody is posting about uh, about maybe a new haircut that they got, or uh, a, a new branded pair of shoes that they have, or some place, a holiday destination that they're going to, and this begins to trigger. Uh, you know, these you, these teens were telling me it begins to trigger a sense of inadequacy or a sense of I wish I had it like them, or you know they are living a a better life or they are living a more classy life and look at the way that I'm living. So our mind is just it's just thrown with these kind of lies and deception that comes and and we see that the lie. When, when, what, what does a lie mean? Lie means something that is not true, something that camouflages itself as the truth, but it is not the truth, okay? And that, that happens whenever we are even passing by this world, every turn anyway. I mean, look into the news or look into um, the, the newspaper. You will have different kinds of things making you feel that, you know, if you had this, your life is sorted. Or if you experience this, your life is sorted. So these are the different kinds of lies that, that keep are uh, uh, keep throwing thrown at us. Now, as we have we had seen earlier in earlier chapters, now these can be in many forms. These can be your own thoughts, okay? These can be suggestions that are brought to about by others around, or this can be even that which the devil throws against you. Now, so when, when if we were to look at them separately, these wrong thoughts that we have or the ideas that we have comes as a result of what we are seeing around. So if we do not, um, if we're not aware or if we cannot, if we do not recognize that these are untruths or lies, we will quickly fall for them. And we will quite inadvertently begin to believe that this is what it is. So for us to, to identify what is fake, you really need to know what is the truth. You cannot know something that is, uh, that is, uh, that is a lie unless you define what is the truth. So when we look at um, so the first and foremost thing is for us to become aware that these are wrong thoughts or the suggestion somebody is making to me, about me, for me, is something that is wrong or that is not in, uh, in, the, in the truth of God's word. Or that which the devil throws at you, again, is something that you need to know what is there in God's word so that you can identify the counterfeit from the real. You can identify the fake from the real, the, the genuine, genuine thing. So for us to do that, first and foremost, 
it is to be aware about what are the untruths or the lies that we are living by or that comes in our mind as we go through life different circumstances that we go through what are some of the lies that that comes about us you know like for example you know simple things like you probably are praying for something that there is a miracle over some area of your life and you begin to see that it is unfolding in somebody else's life and you know there's a miracle happening in that person's life with a similar situation that you have and you begin to say maybe god doesn't love me maybe you know i'm i'm second on the rank for god right now that that seems like a very um uh you know very as if you feel justified on what it is but that is an untruth that is a lie and you can only pull that out if you recognize that your mind is being in a state like that is 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 where is churning those kinds of untruths in your mind okay now i'm just going to stop here and what i want to do and um, i'm going to do something that i did yesterday is i'm going to break you all out into smaller groups okay um and i'd like each of you to share with your group member um certain forms of thoughts or certain untruths that uh, so it's it's a it's a you're being in a state of awareness you're, you're actually going to say okay you know i i'm going to really think about what it is that i'm living by what are some of the untruths that i'm living by and it's important that we you know now this is a close group we're just being you know we're just building each other up and this is not to uh you know pinpoint at someone and this doesn't make you less spiritual or more spiritual okay it's just to hold each other accountable help each other to come to a place of recognition so that we can begin to see that hey this is an untruth that i'm i have in my head or that's that's something that's been thrown at me and i'm going to take i'm going to commit to searching out god's word to it so that i can believe what is truth and renounce what is a lie okay so we're going to do that i hope that's okay with everybody i hope it isn't too sensitive a topic to uh to to bring about with the group yes do i have a thumbs up or a yes or a okay sounds great or no i'm not for that idea yes yes anita uh if we share and after that what the other person is supposed to do nothing you're just going to share because you okay. just you're it's like a you know you work together how you share with one another and say hey this is where i am these are the kind of lies or untruths that i am battling with right now and i want to you know i, I want to come out it's just that no one you don't have to do anything you're just going to together as a family when you're in a struggle who do you go to you go to your family right so we are a family here together just going to be sharing with one another and becoming aware because as we speak there there will be a lot of awareness that comes about so you don't have to do anything just support and help and maybe at the end of those 5 10 minutes just pray for one another so that uh, you know god's word can be revealed in their lives and truth will surface will be established okay i hope that's clear anita yes ma'am Yeah Thank okay Mankey did you did you have a question i think you raised your hand No pass that no, sorry it's okay. a mistake All right no no problem okay so um if there is anyone who hasn't got into a group don't worry you can stay in the main room and uh, uh, i'll be there so we we could all work together as we do that okay so just give me a few minutes i'm just going to break this Okay I think there will probably be 5 in each room and uh yeah if there isn't if there isn't anyone and is staying in the main room don't worry we'll be there okay and I'm just going to press a timer of maybe 15 minutes so that oops uh, so that we could all share Okay so hope you have a blessed time go ahead please click uh when you see i think it will say joining please ensure that you join in
uh, the rest of you on the Salome, Louis, Bracy, Siddhant, Felix, you'll have all been put into rooms. If you can accept the the uh, uh, the invite, you will be moved into a room. Can you accept what is on the room? You'll be able to move into a room. Uh, Salome, Louis, and Felix. Hi, Kennedy. Uh, Pratik, you didn't have anyone in your room, is it? Yes, ma'am. Nobody was there? No, nobody was there. Ma OK, one minute. I'm just trying to see if I can put you in another room. Because I don't think anybody, Felix, Salome, and Louis don't seem to be here in this room. I'm not able to put you in a room. Okay, I think uh, we'll we'll just uh, Pratik. I oh sorry, Pratik. Yeah, Pratik, you're there. Louis, are you there? Louis and Felix, are you all in the on the call? Okay, Pratik, are you there on the call? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, there. Okay, Felix, are you there on the call? Felix? Yes. Oh, yeah. I just joined yeah. I, I, I didn't get what was being done. That's why I was quiet. Sorry. OK, no problem. No problem. So what we're going to do, Salome, I think you're also in the room. I think four of us can just stay in this room and just share. So what I what we were talking about is, um, you know, there are sometimes many uh, untruths or many lies that we live by because of the kind of circumstances that we go through so um and a lot of times we need to become aware that we are engaging in these lies and a lot of times we we are not aware and because of that we it tends to break us emotionally it brings us to a place of uh, uh, sadness or a place of depression or anxiety so we're just going to be taking this time to just share any kind of untruth or lies that our minds are engaging in so that we can uh, you know just pray with one another okay all right so we could we could do that uh, so, uh, Pratik would you like to start Pratik yes, ma'am uh, uh -huh. Like uh, uh, these days, I'm facing like a uh, light like that I'm in. I'm into this uh, financial uh, crisis. Uh, I mean, in in all these uh, circumstances where I'm studying in the Bible College and I, I'm also uh, working. I was working before, but now uh, I was co completely into ministry. Uh, so, so each and everything, uh, it is a li little bit of uh, challenging for me to deal with the finances. Uh, so this thing is always uh, hitting my mind uh, about the finances. So I'm praying for it. And also I'm seeing a lot of changes in it. Uh, so this is uh, something I just want to come out of it. Ma Thank you. Thank you, Pratik. Yeah, so uh, I think what Pratik is saying is with the financial challenges that are coming about, there are, there are questions and doubts about 
uh, how he is going to be able to manage. And he's saying, yeah, so that's that's the lie or the untruth that he's been facing. Thank you, Pratik. Yes, uh, Felix, would you like to share? Felix or Salome? Yeah, so uh, yeah. I'm doing my post graduation right now, also like with the Bible college. So, um, and that's how I started offline. So, it's really difficult uh, to manage everything on the same day with the like with studies and uh, with my colleges. And also, I'm taking like music class. So, uh, I don't have time for that because the entire day goes in like offline college. So I'm um, really like over and stressed about that. So I don't want to like uh, get stressed about it and like just have faith in God or whatever happens. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Salome. Yeah. So she's Salome says about um, the multiple things that she's into right now and the kind of stress that she feels that you know things may not work out or things may not go well and uh, she doesn't want to be in that space but to be able to uh, take this with more faith great okay felix or isaac would you all like to share i think mine would be about the kids um have younger kids and they really troublesome um, <laughs> i don't know what it's, it's a lie it's, it's it's a harmful. It's um, yeah. That, that 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 that's what I can say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you, Felix. Okay, yeah. About children. Yeah, I think I'll share once even Isaac shares. I think that's also a couple of things that maybe that uh, probably works in my mind too. Yeah, Isaac. I don't know if you think you joined in late, but we're talking about. Uh, so just being aware of the kind of lies or untruths that um, our mind engages in because of our current circumstances. It could be um, uh, 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 lies that we ourselves have told ourselves or something that others tell us or the enemy puts to us. And we, we, we just broke ourselves into groups so that we could be aware about what is happening in our minds so that we can uh, identify it and learn how to uh, take God's word for it. So, yes, Isaac, I'm out, off to you. Uh, okay. Um, well, I just joined, but uh, I there's some lies that the enemy has been lying to me. I have a, a small poetry. So sometimes the enemy put the thought of uh, maybe they are going to die and all those kind of things. So uh, the fear is there and I had to overcome it by praying and and declaring the word of God. So that's a lie that the enemy constantly brings in. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, so uh, I think I have something quite similar to what Felix, I have grown children. I have uh, teen children, rather, not grown, teen, teenage children. And uh, the thoughts about um, one, about, uh, you know, the, the kind of, um, influences that there is right now in their in their current world through the through friends through entertainment through media uh, so the lies of the enemy that says you know uh, they you know the, where, where how will they be saved if they are so steeped in all of this how will they be saved um, so salvation is something that uh, that that keeps my mind um, very, very strong in. And so I, I keep speaking the word of God that the, that, uh, the Holy Spirit will pour out uh, his spirit. The Lord will pour out his spirit on, on your sons and daughters in the last days. So I keep declaring that and those fears. Or, you know, when you see uh, teens going through different, engaging through different uh, you know, maybe certain irresponsibilities or, you know, you know that they have many things to do, but they're never on top of their work. And um, uh, there is always a going after of them, you know, a deliberate attempt of helping them see, you know, get there, get this done. So that fears of what what is going to happen 
to their future if they go on like this. So then, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 is something that, again, uh, I, I stay declared in. And when there is, uh, and I think uh, maybe I think two or three of us, I think uh, we're, we're probably, you, you're in a home and there are m multiple number of things that kind of clutters your head, especially when you're a parent. You have many responsibilities and decisions that you, you need to take. And then many times you question that. And uh, just being able to say, you know, the peace of God is there, that uh, I will have the peace when my mind stay, is stayed on him. So that's 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 great. So Kit, could we uh, probably pray for one another? We have, I think, four minutes, just a 30-second prayer for each. So I think, uh, Pratik, you can pray for Felix. Felix, uh, you can pray for Isaac. Isaac, you can pray for Salome. Salome, you can pray for me. And I will pray for Pratik. Okay, just 30 seconds, just that uh, um, we can, you know, we just hold them up and specific things that we've spoken about. So Pratik, you pray for Felix, Felix for Isaac, Isaac for Salome, Salome for me, and I will pray for Pratik again. So Pratik, would you like to start? Sure, ma'am. So the Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful time of uh, uh, speaking, Lord Father. Uh, yes, Jesus, we know that uh, the Satan is the father of all lies, Lord. Uh, if, today, Lord, we pray to the uh, declare the complete uh, healing of Father uh, uh, into the life of uh, Brother Felix, Lord. So whatever he might be going, uh, the, all the lies of, uh, by the enemy of Father, we declare the uh, victory over his life and his family. So whatever the uh, thinking, all his heart's desire of Father, so whatever is uh, uh, touching his um, uh, soul and the flesh of Father, let it be removed in Jesus' name. You bless him in, uh, in a victorious way, Father. We ask in Jesus' name, all the uh, we, we leave it everything in your hands of Father. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, Felix, you can pray for Isaac. Yes, um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray come to our brother Isaac into your hands. We pray for his business. We pray for his well-being. Father, intervene in anything he's doing. Bless him, O oh God. Be strength on him. Open doors, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let everything he touched be blessed. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaac, you could pray for Salome. Yeah, sorry. I think that's uh, what Salome was saying before. If I Salome ended. was was talking about uh, there are many things that she's involved in. She goes to college. She does Bible college as well as her music. So there are many times that she's stressed with the many things that she needs to do. So there's a, okay. there's a sense of worry and concern in those areas. Okay. Father in heaven, we thank you for everything that Salome we have uh, make Salome to be able to engage in. I pray for strength for Salome. I pray that you help her in taking control of everything that she's doing. I pray that you give her peace of mind concerning all her engagement. I pray that you give her rest concerning everything, every worry and anxiety and fear that the enemy is trying to bring against her. I pray in the name of Jesus that she overcome everything in the name of Jesus. That spirit of fear, the Bible says, we has not given us the spirit of fear but of love, of power, and of sound mind, I pray against that spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, God, I pray for uh, uh, Pastor Gina, Father God, and I pray that you be there with her, you help her when whatever she does, oh, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that you have given the uh, spirit of uh, sound mind, of oh, Father God, and I know, God, you have plans to prosper or not to harm her, but to give her a hope and a future, oh, Father God. God, you protect her and her family, oh, Father God. You be there with her every time, oh, Lord God. She speaks your word, oh, Father Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master Father John. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Salome. Lord, we just bring uh, Pratik to your throne of grace. Lord, we just declare that uh, you are the God and you are a, you are his provider. Father, that his vats will be full. Father, Lord, that all his treasures would be full. That you are a God, Lord, of, of wealth, Father, and you pour out in a great way, Father. May there be no lack, may there be no need, because you are his shepherd. And and Lord, we he lacks no good thing when he is with you. Father, we just uh, come against every attack of the enemy that brings about 
about doubt with regard to his finances, that you would bless him, Lord. There will be miracles and breakthroughs that take place in his life and in his finances, that he will have more to give, that he will have enough to hold and more to give. Thank you because you're a prayer answering God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my group. Thank you so much. I think the rest of them are coming in. Okay, are we all back? Oh, great. Okay, everybody's back. Was that a fruitful time? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. One of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Yeah, great, yes. great. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, good, good. So, so you also have connected and you know what you can pray for, what people are going through and, um, you know, what's, what's on in their minds. And uh, I think this is, uh, this is, this is wonderful. So um, uh, why did we do this exercise? I think it's just for us, number one, to just become aware that a lot of this is going on. I think even as I was talking, I began to see a couple more of things that I, I had in my mind. And, uh, you know, I had asked one of the students to pray for me. And, and I, I just feel so blessed that, you know, in prayer, as, as we come uh, to God with this, he is definitely going to going to work through us. So one is just being able to recognize that there are lies and there are tr uh, untruths that are there. Okay. And what we, we need to understand is these lies or these untruths begin to harm us. Okay. They, they harm us and uh, it, it moves us into a place of emotional disturbances like you know if, if for us for those of us who are in the counseling class we remember that you know the thoughts that you keep engaging in is what is going to fuel your emotions and your your feelings so uh, it it may be it may be something that you generate within or something that people may say because they just don't like you or uh, you know they're just against you so a lot of these lies and untruths is something you need to recognize you need to become aware of again we 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 look at those that uh, that the devil brings about which we understand that he is the father of lies he is He's, he wants to do something to us to keep us away from the truth. He, because he does not, uh, you know, John 8, 44 says, he does not stand in the truth because there is absolutely no truth in him. There's no ounce of truth in him. So when, when he continues to uh, bring about those lies, he gets what he has, what, what he needs. So whatever it is, regardless of whatever untruth or lies that is thrown at us, we, one, we recognize it, we become aware of it, and then we fight it, we defend it with the word of God. We stand declaring the word of God because we know God's word is truth, and that's the only thing that can negate uh, these lies. And that's why that's why it is so important for us to be in that place of understanding the truth of God. Okay, um, like, like it says in uh, uh, John 8 verses uh, 30, 31 and 32, it says, um, if you abide in my word, uh, you are my disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So it's the truth that, that washes away the lies that we engage in. So even as each of us have, spoken about this today right now it is up to us uh, you know either to go back to scripture maybe some of us are already doing it you know getting a couple of scriptures just to just to attack this you know we uh, it's a sword of the spirit which is the word of god you're using the sword you, you you're, you've put on the armor and you're using this against the lies and the enemies that have come so you've you've identified it through through this this little group right now now get god's word and start to um, uh, to declare it, to believe it, to to pronounce this over your lives. Okay, all right, great. Okay, we're we're close to uh, ten fifty. Let's uh, stop for a break. It's ten fifty on my clock. We will we will connect back at eleven o'clock. So come back and uh, we will continue on learning a bit more of this and into our second point. Okay, go grab a coffee and see you soon. <laughs> 